Hey, what is up everybody? It is Hans. It has been a long time since I made a video. So what have I been up to for the past few months? Namely, I've been really interested in getting to know some old techniques, some alternative processes. And I was really interested in platinotypes, that is making platinum and palladium prints. However, doing some research into that, I discovered that it is really, really expensive. But I found another technique that is capable of delivering similar, if not identical, results called a calotype. And that is where I've been focusing my efforts. So what exactly is a calotype? Well, there's a really, really scientific explanation for it, but basically what it is is a contact printing technique where you take a negative and you put it on a sensitized piece of paper and then you expose it in UV light to create an image. So what does a calotype look like? Well. After all this time, I've managed to get a few successful, what I deem successful, uh, samples of it. And this is one. And as you can see, it is still sharp, uh, but you can see the brush strokes here where I actually had to brush on the emulsion onto the paper. Um, and then the actual shading here itself in the pictures is contrasty, but it has a certain depth that's kind of lacking in like an inkjet or a traditional digital print. And that's because the emulsion has been painted directly onto the paper and it soaks into the paper. So the image doesn't float on top like a digital print. It kind of is embedded in the picture. Here's another sample. And I don't think that this technique is very good for all subjects, but for some subjects it really, really sings. And this is kind of a, almost a noir feeling sort of portrait. And I think it really, really adds to the portrait. So I would be selective about, I mean, I wouldn't do a, a portrait of the family dog in calotype um, or platinotype or any of those other alternative processes really. But this one, I think in particular, it really shows the strength of the process. One of the cool things I think about these kinds of processes, and there are tons of them, it's calotypes, cyanotypes, um, Van Dyke Brown, the, lots of them that you can do research on, and hopefully I'll get to try some of them myself. But one of the cool things about them is that you can make them with any kind of image. You don't have to start with a film image. Um, you can use a digital image as well. Now, traditionally, these kinds of images were made with large format cameras. However, I understand that most people don't have access to or have no desire to learn how to use a large format camera. I, of course, do. Those images that I showed you earlier, those were made with a large format camera, a 4x5. But then what I did was I scanned the image, blew it up to the size that I wanted, and then created an image from that. So you really have a lot of flexibility in your medium. You can make one of these from um, a 35mm film, a 6x7 film, a digital camera. It doesn't matter. What matters is you take an image that you like and then you do something with it with your hands. And I think that's part of what a lot of people are kind of missing about the photographic process. So what is the basic calotype process like? Well, what you do is you take a piece of watercolor paper, usually it has to be a pretty high quality. You will mix together um, an iron salt ferric oxalate and a silver nitrate, drop by drop into a shot glass, swirl it around, put it on a piece of paper, and then you spread it around with a, a, a brush or a rod and then you wait for that to dry. Then you take your transparency, slap it on top, put it in a contact printing frame, and then you can leave it out in the sun if you'd like, or you can put it into a UV printer, whichever one you prefer. I actually made my own UV printer because I'm way too much of a control freak to depend on the sun, but you can use the sun to create these kinds of images. After you've exposed your image for an appropriate amount of time, it really depends on what, how much sunlight is outside, how strong your UV printer is, what have you. You've got to, exp you've got to experiment. It's part of the learning process. And you're, you're, side note, you're going to create garbage images. You're going to create a lot of crap. And that's fine. It's fun. It's part of the process. You don't you didn't start photography taking masterpieces, and now I'm sure you're pretty good. But, you know, you got to learn. So anyway, back to the actual process. So what you're going to do is you take the picture, put it into your tray, put your developer on it. And this is cool because it develops almost instantly. So you're gonna have like kind of a, like a ghost image on your paper. And then when you put the developer on it, everything just kind of shows up magically. And it, it's, it's a very cool to see in person. So after that, it goes through a clearing bath and then you can tone the print if you want. You probably want to tone it because uh, it really increases the longevity of the print. And one of the cool things about toning is that you, 
can actually use platinum or palladium in your toning and get a print that is basically chemically identical to a platinum or palladium print. They're completely, not completely, but there are different processes, but you can actually kind of get to the same endpoint using a calotype. I use gold, um, which is expensive, but not nearly as expensive as platinum or palladium. So I use a gold toner in my prints, which creates kind of a cooler image, um, but it still has a little bit of warmth to it. It's not like um, crazy cool or blue, not like a cyanotype or anything like that, but it is um, still a little bit on the cool side of brown, if that makes any sense. So after you tone the image, you rinse it, fix it, rinse it again, hang it up to dry, and you're done. And you're going to get an image that is different. You know, it, I would not say that these are technically superior to digital prints because they're they're not. They have their own personality, their own warmth. They're not going to be as sharp as a um, an inkjet or whatever you know high end print. They're just they're just not that kind of print. But I don't think that's the point. I I think the point of this sort of exercise is not to create the most technically fantastic image. It's to create an image that says something, that means something, that is part of you. So anyway, I definitely recommend, do some research into it, try it out. It's not cheap to get these chemicals and to do all this yourself. Um, but if you've got the means or the time, then you know I'd say go ahead and give it a shot. I think the next process that I'm going to try is cyanotype because it's a lot simpler. Um, it's a lot cheaper as well, but it's also a contact printing solution as well. And you can even tone it. You can. It doesn't have to be blue. I think that's kind of a misconception as far as like cyanotype goes. People think that, oh, it's going to be that garish blue color, but it, it really doesn't have to be. You can tone it into a different colors using teas and other tannics. And, but I'm going to get into that. I'm going to learn about it. I really don't know much about it at all. So I bought a little kit. I'm going to play with it with my kids and myself, and I'll see what I can come up with. So, of course, the thing that you might be asking is, why? Why do all this? And I think the answer for me is that I became really interested in the print, not the digital representation of an image on a monitor, because I just, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't care what an image looks like. I want to feel it. I want to see it in person. And it's really difficult to tell someone online or on YouTube um, that this sort of image in person is just significantly different than what you would see on screen in a digital image because until you can see it in person you're really not going to understand and that's not being patronizing it's just if you haven't seen it then you don't know and i didn't know either until i did it myself the images really do have a life of their own they, they are they are part of the paper they are part of of the craft of creating an image it's not just taking a picture with a button and then looking at it on a screen and then printing it through an inkjet. My hands were making brush strokes on the paper and I put the transparency directly onto the paper and, and, and all of these things are my touch, me as an artist that's making the image as opposed to just kind of pressing a button and sending it on to technology. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with printing with an inkjet printer or sending it off to your lab, whatever. But I found that for stuff that really means something to me, I wanted to have more of a say and more of an actual role in the process of creating the image on paper. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate you watching the channel and I'm going to be more active coming up this year so hit that subscribe button tell me what you want to see what works what doesn't work unfortunately i cannot grow back my hair if that is what you want because genetics hate me thanks so much for watching guys have a good one